Today, I would like to give my first impressions of the new Arcam A25 integrated amplifier and the matching Arcam SD5 streamer. Now, for those unfamiliar with this British company, which is now owned by Harman, Arcam has been building amplifiers since the 70s. Now, this A25 integrated amp is interesting because it is Class G. Yes, G, as in good. Now, I'll ask you to pause the video for a second. Please comment if you have to guess will Class G sound closest to Class A, A, B, or D. Have you ever heard of Class G? Now, I have unboxed probably close to 100 products, and there have been only a handful of times that I've been impressed with the packaging. Today, I would like to give kudos to Arcam for their excellent packaging. If a company pays a lot of attention to packaging, they will pay the same amount of attention, if not more, to their products. Well, that's at least what I believe. Now, after opening the first box, I noticed Arcam designed the inner box to be open easily. The accessory box has the standard power cable, a remote, and batteries. I know how much trouble it takes for a company to include batteries, so I appreciate this. Apparently, they chose eco-friendly materials for the packaging, so no plastic. I like it because it does give a premium feel when not using plastic. Next, they put the safety and quick start guide in an envelope underneath the box top cover. For the manual, you'll need to download it from the website. Now, the packaging is so well designed that it can survive a drop from the second floor. Well, not that you ever want to test out with your purchase. Along with the A25, Harman sent me the 799 Arcam SD5 streamer. Now, once again, the packaging is top notch. It is almost a carbon copy of the A25 packaging. You have the accessory box, which includes the remote and the power and control cables. <laughs> and thank you once again for the batteries. Now, I love the fact it only weighs 3.5 kilogram. While I'm at it, let me put up the specs here. The SD5 uses the ESS ES9018 DAC chip. I don't think anyone can argue that it is a perfect match for the A25 amp. It is almost criminal if you don't buy both together. Now, I have mixed feelings about this. There are no buttons, meaning you must use the remote or phone app to control it. It makes the unit look very clean and modern, which I like, but Call me old school. I would have loved to access the menu without using the remote or my phone. So let me show you how easy it is to install the app. So download the app from Google Play Store, install it, run it. You can always read the end user agreement, but yeah, I usually skip those. You can get everything up and running within a minute. The app detected the SD5 on my network instantaneously. Connect to it, and that's it. With the app, you can access internet radio, Amazon Music, Kobos, and podcasts. And if you plug a USB drive with all your music into it, you can also access it with the app. Next, if you are a Tidal or Spotify user like me, the SD5 supports Tidal and Spotify Connect natively. Just load the music you want in Tidal, look for the SD5 streamer on the network, connect to it, and done. This is cool. You can go to the next song on your title playlist with the remote. Finally, it is room ready and will support MQA. So, my audio buddies, let's talk about the Arcam A25 and how it sounds next. But before that, let me share a few lovely photos I took. Now, at the price of USD1499 for the A25 amplifier, you get a very stylishly designed product. Now, I love how they use the yellow color with the A25. Look at the vents on the top. Yellow! The side. Yellow! Even the front knobs. Yellow. Now, I think the yellow matches well with the black body. 
Now look at the bottom. Surprise. Cute. High wife approval factor. I love it because it is subtle and does not scream at you. And the yellow color idea also carries on to the remote. And what they did was brilliant. Only the volume buttons are in yellow. Now in this case, I want the yellow to scream at me. How many times have I spent more than 3 seconds looking for the volume button? With this, even a 5 year old will find it right away. So moving to the rear, you have this lip at the back of the top panel. And the design is cool in the sense it hides the Bluetooth antenna. The only downside is that if you plug in and plug devices frequently, it can be annoying because it is not easy to read the inputs and output labels if you're looking from the top. The A25 has three line inputs, one pre-out and one MM phono input. Now for the digital inputs, you have one optical, two coaxial in, and one USB-C. USB-C? RCAM? Why? That means I cannot use my fancy USB cables. Now, of course, funny, you have the speaker terminals. Now, although I don't use headphones, it is cool. You can connect your headphones wire or wirelessly. Next, the A25 has a simple front display, and it was easy for me to navigate the menu. You can adjust plenty of settings. For example, the different sound profiles on the built-in DAC. You can dim the display with the remote for those who love to listen in the dark. The unit is rated to output 100 watt into 8 ohms and 165 watts into 4 ohms. The best part for an old man like me is that it only weighs 9 kg and does not get hot. You cannot use it as a heater in winter. Now as I mentioned, this amp is Class G and Arkham has been working with Class G for many years. This is the 5th generation. And I look on their website, and here, let me quote it. What exactly is Class G? Like a hybrid car engine? Class G implements multiple power supplies rather than just a single supply. If a dynamic signal is received that goes beyond the capability of this first power supply, the secondary supply is gradually brought in up to full rated power output as required. This gives a very efficient design as additional power is only used when required much like a turbocharger. Hey, I don't know about you, but I love turbochargers. So what about the pros and cons of Class G? Now, according to Arkham's website, pros, greater efficiency and transparency with less wasted heat energy. Cons, expensive to engineer and hard to perfect, hence seldom seen. Now, I guess if you live in a country where electricity is expensive, yeah, you would appreciate Just it. Just a brief interruption, esteemed viewers. As you may know, I'm Tom Martin, Chief Content Officer of The Absolute Sound. We have a new product. It's on the Substack platform, and we're going to do some interesting things with Substack, first of which is reader questions and answers. Each Monday, Readers will submit questions, we'll pick the most interesting ones, and we'll answer the questions on Friday. We'll also have early access to articles and special blogs that don't appear anywhere else. We hope you'll join us. It's only a cost of a cup of coffee per month. Just check on the screen or in the show notes below. Thanks, and now back to the show. So, how is the A25? Now, here are my first impressions. and. I will highlight the things that immediately caught my attention. First, dark background. When they quoted 106 dB SNR, yeah, they were not kidding. Usually you only get a pitch black background with expensive units rather than something semi-affordable like this. Next, if I have to give you a frame of reference compared to the more mainstream classes, the sound of this class G is closer to a good class D amp in the sense that the mid-range is neutral and linear and some would call it honest to the source. Another characteristic of this amp is that it is not harsh. It is almost polite. I say almost because it can get lively and energetic when needed. If you're building a system to relax at moderate volume, like if you live in an apartment and cannot play at concert level volume, the non-harsh sounding nature of this amp might be what you are looking for. Now, I am hesitant to call it smooth because I don't want to give the impression that it is like rolled off on the top end because it is not. 
there are plenty of details on the top end. Now I paired it with Focal and BMW speakers and for those who bought that kind of speakers and find it too bright, the A25 will help reduce the harshness while still giving you plenty of detail. Now I have tried it at many locations and notice it works well with jazz and old recordings. My friend Mr. Vintage commented, hey, that when, she, when he listened to the, the Joni James song, You Belong To Me from the 50s on the A25, it brought him back to his teenager years. It was able to create the right atmosphere for him. Now, one way to look at it is this. This amp, like a good class D amp, can create the space in the soundstage really well. Now, I noticed that I can hear the space in the room, if that make any sense. And these older recordings tend to be recorded in a live environment. And the A25 recreates the ambience of the room really well. Listening to Louis Armstrong's Hello Dolly, this song has a few trumpets playing and it's easy to imagine where they are in the room. As I mentioned before, the amp is not harsh, but it can get shouty when needed, in a good way. So when the trumpet goes loud, the A25 can keep up and give that shoutiness I expect from a real trumpet, almost like the turbo kicking in and giving that extra power. Now, it is easy to imagine a real trumpet in the room. When the singer yells, the high notes have energy and the emotions really come through. Next, Mr. Vintage called this a cheerful amp because we noticed the, the tempo, I guess, that the timing is good with this amp and it's easy to get us tapping our feet. Finally, we noticed the scale of everything in the soundstage is correct. You now, some setup, the singer can feel a bit big, but not in this case. Everything is properly scaled. What about the areas of opportunity? See, I'm hesitant to talk about it until after the unit has passed the break-in period. I only have 20 hours on the unit. And let me explain and give you an example, okay? So at Mr. Vintage's home, we try with three speakers. The Kabas MC40, that's a dark sounding speaker. The Vintage 83dB Lin Sara 9, a slightly bright speaker with a killer open mid-range. And the lively sounding TS Voyager Special Edition. So one of the conclusions we drew was that if you love the Class D neutral mid-range, where it is linear in the lower mids, but don't like Class D because some of the affordable Class D can be a bit dry, in this case, you can consider Class G because we did not hear any dryness at, mids, at Mr. Vintage's home. Now we concluded this is one of the reasons to choose Class G over D. However, when I brought it to Mr. Quad's home and used it on his 83dB Sonus Faber Concerto stand mount speaker, we noticed a hint of dryness, especially at higher volume. It may be the speaker matching because there was also no hint of dryness at my home with my DAC and the 92dB Silver Line Sonata speakers. I also had no problems with higher volume. With some songs, the top end had a slight extended decay, giving the illusion of space in the soundstage. So, is it speaker matching or break-in? There was an improvement from the 10 hour mark to the 20 hour mark. So I must give it maybe 50 to 100 hours before providing an in-depth review. So let's wrap it up at this point. This combo is for someone who likes a clean, good looking setup. Plug and play, reliable, and have a sound that is not harsh, neutral, and usually listens at normal volume. Now, I like the design and the looks of the A25 and ST5. They will look fantastic in many living rooms, high wave approval factor as I mentioned, and I look forward to seeing more Class G amps from Arcam. Alright, see you next time.